All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just briefly pull up everyone's favorite source of knowledge, Wikipedia. And uh, I'm going to take a quick look to see a little bit of information on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is the professional social network. network it has its pluses and minuses. Well, apparently, according to this, it was founded 12 years ago. I didn't quite know that. I didn't know it was that old. But 2003 is when LinkedIn came out. I have not used LinkedIn since that long. I think I've used it since 2009, maybe 10. If you've never used LinkedIn, well, we're going to use it today. If you have used it before, uh, hopefully you learn a few new things. But LinkedIn is uh, actually, uh, I did know this, LinkedIn is on the stock market. So you can buy stock in LinkedIn, in, in the LinkedIn company. If LinkedIn does well, your stock will do well and you will make money. Just to take a quick look because I'm curious. Uh, how much is LinkedIn stock worth? I think it's, I think last time I checked it was like $200 a share. Let's see. $186. So one share of LinkedIn is $186. Do they pay dividends? Um, I don't know if we can tell easily on this chart, but on another kind of chart we can look that up. Usually tech companies don't. For some reason they don't pay dividends. Um, usually it's companies that create something. But I sort of feel LinkedIn doesn't pay dividends, most likely. But their stock is pretty valuable, although they've had ups and downs. And that's a whole other can of worms. But LinkedIn stock is worth more than Yahoo. It, Yahoo stock is worth $31. And it's worth more than Twitter. Twitter's worth $27. And Twitter's been having a bad time on the stock market, actually. So it's only worth $27. And Google has been doing really well. They're worth $643 per share. Facebook is $90 a share. So anyway, that's a different can of worms about investing and the stock market and stuff. If you're interested, see me after the you know, during the break and stuff, because this is out of off topic, but I just wanted to look up here LinkedIn. And so LinkedIn's been around since 2003, and it's the professional. It's a business-oriented social networking service. So what we're going to use LinkedIn for is to build a professional profile for ourselves. Because think about this. Um, if you are trying to get a job, you're going to turn in a resume. People are going to look at your resume. That's nice. Then they're going to put it to the side, and then they're going to look you up online. Like it or not, more and more companies are going to look you up online, especially if you're trying to get a job. And if the main presence that you have online are those embarrassing Facebook photos, or those embarrassing Twitter photos, or those embarrassing Instagram photos, it might not be so good for you to get a job. But if you've got a LinkedIn profile where you've got your best photos, you've got your best credentials and you've got all your best foot forward, that's going to be great for you because people are going to see the professional side of you. Of course you can have the silly side and the, and the frivolous side and the embarrassing side, but if you also cultivate your professional side online, that will help you because more and more companies are looking at you online. We are not just what's on paper, we are what's online, like it or not. And so we're going to talk about creating a LinkedIn account. How many of you before today's class have heard of LinkedIn before? Raise your hand. Everyone. But how many before this class have created a LinkedIn account? Not as many. Halfway. And how many of you that have created your LinkedIn account have used it in the last month? Okay, there we go. So you still want to create it and update it. Maybe it still shows your last job. Maybe it doesn't show that you've gotten that brand new certificate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show us how to create a brand new account. You may already have one, so just sit back while I create the account. But if you don't have an account, I'm going to go through that, and it's not too, too long to do that. And then I'll talk about the important things to set up. And the reason, again, we're talking about it in this class is you might be learning this stuff to get a job as a social media marketer. You might be doing this for your business. Well, let's say I have a company called victorswebdesigns.com. And I myself am part of the face of that company. So if people are looking for web designers in San Diego, they might find my LinkedIn profile, they might see what I'm about there, and they might see, oh, I can hire them. 
It has happened to me, actually. I've actually gotten a job to do a job in Photoshop because someone looked up, they told me they looked up Photoshop professionals in Chula Vista, and my name came up. So my credentials and stuff about Photoshop are on LinkedIn. I got a job to do something in Photoshop because they searched my name and found my LinkedIn. So what we'll do is let's open up your web browser if you don't have it. If you don't have it linked in, linked in. Go over to LinkedIn.com. L-I-N-K-E-D-I-N, LinkedIn.com. LinkedIn has evolved to be more of a social network like the others. You might not have thought of it like that. You might have created a LinkedIn a while ago, but now it's added more social features. It actually let you, lets you write a blog and comment and uh, you know, all this social stuff. And so we'll look at some of that, but we're going to focus on creating a professional LinkedIn profile. So if you've already got a LinkedIn account, at the very top you can select to log in with your email and password. If you forgot your password, it's been a while, try to retrieve your password. But I'm going to set this up as a brand new person. You can do that as well. You can create a new one. Maybe this new one that you create will be better than the old one. You can delete the old one. It's up to you. But I'm going to go through this as creating a brand new account. So take a moment to either sign in or sign up. If you are creating a brand new account, they might ask you right away, are you a student? Yes or no. If you're not, you can add a job title and company. And this is what people always get stuck on, even with a paper resume. What do I put in? I'm a student. I'm still learning. I don't know what to add. Well, we'll be talking about uh, embellishment, not lying on your resume and anything like that, but just not quite exaggerating, but making yourself look the best. For example, if you're taking this class here, you are learning to become a social media marketer. That is something we can add into to, to LinkedIn eventually here. It'll ask us what are your credentials or certificates. Well, we can add, we'll see here, that we can add social media marketing experience. So for me, it's asking, are you a student or not? I'm going to set it up as if I'm a student. So I'll say yes, school or college, university, start year, end year, or expected. Let's say Southwestern College started in, uh, I don't know, we'll say 2015. I'll say I'm going to leave in two years, that's 2017, and I am over 18. If you are creating an account brand new, it would also ask you, well, what do you want to use LinkedIn for? What's the main thing you want to do with LinkedIn? We'll use this info to personalize your experience, and it'll be private. So it says, I want to find a job, keep in touch with contacts, stay up to date with my industry, build my professional network, or not, sh not sure yet. I'm going to say I'm not sure. This is why I'm showing this as a brand new user, because you might not see some of these things if you've already got an account. Um, but we will be able to find them if we check settings and so forth. But I'm going to say, well, I'm not quite sure what I want to use LinkedIn. Everyone says I should use it, but I'm not sure exactly what to use it for. So I'll select not sure. The thing that's useful about um, LinkedIn is that you can have, you can forge, you can make connections. So let's say I connect to a person, let's say I'm a student, and I connected with uh, my friend, and he's connected with his father, and his father owns a business. I can make a connection from myself to my friend's father, and then that could be a possibility in that I could have some sort of business relationship. So having connections uh, where you either search for people or if you add, for example, your email address, it will check your... It will, check their, it will check your address book, your Gmail, Hotmail, whatever you have. It'll check who's there, and it'll check if those people are on LinkedIn and suggest you to connect. Because the more connections you have, the better. 
And this is not exactly like having more followers on Twitter or Instagram or whatever in that you're trying to sell them something. This is connections with people where you can, and not to t say it the wrong way, but what it, what's in it for you? When you have a Twitter and a Facebook and so forth, it's more like what is what it, what are your what's in it for your followers? You're posting on Twitter, Instagram, etc. Who cares? What's in it for your followers? Why would they care? This is the opposite. Use LinkedIn and be selfish. What's in it for you? Just because people c want to connect with you, don't blindly click all the time. Accept, accept, accept. You want to see what do they offer that will help my LinkedIn profile. And I'll explain that a little bit more later, but here it's asking me, why don't you add your email address? We'll check who's connected already on LinkedIn and we can help you connect with them. I'm not going to set this up, but it might be useful and I can still do it at another screen. So I have a skip button. I'm going to skip. It'll say one more time, are you sure you don't want to connect? No, I'll skip for the moment. It's going to send an email to me and I have to confirm my email, but if I want to skip that, so if you're creating an account brand new, it's, it's going to want you to go check your email, but we can get around that actually. If you go back to the address linkedin.com, there we go. So I just want to confirm uh, for a moment. Did everyone manage to either create an account or to log in? Does anyone need a little help? I don't believe so. I believe if you've got an old account that you haven't used in a year, it's still there. I don't think LinkedIn deletes any of those old accounts. Is there is there any other way that it asks you to try to retrieve your account? No, it doesn't recognize that email. And have you tried to go through retrieve password? Like for did you click on the button forgot password? So it might be that either you used a different account or maybe it did close it. But to my knowledge, I don't think Facebook, I mean I don't think LinkedIn deletes accounts. Hmm, okay, if it still doesn't find it, let's just try to create a new one. Did you have very much stuff on your on that old account? You remember setting it up or using it really? Are you able to to use? Uh, uh, do you have any other email address that you can use temporarily just for a different account? Then I would go and create a brand new account with that other address, and then we can delete that other LinkedIn in case you don't want it. Right. So, uh, LinkedIn has aspects of a social media network, just like the other networks, like Facebook and Google Plus and other things we'll talk about, but it's focused more on professional. So as part of the homework, let's look at some of these aspects that are going to be necessary. At the very top, you've got home, profile, connections, education, jobs, interests. So if you hover over the profile menu and you click on edit profile, one of the most important things you want to do on LinkedIn is to claim your name. Uh, when we talked about Instagram, I tried to create an Instagram account called Victor. It was taken. So I tried Victor Campos. That was taken. I don't remember what I ended up getting, but I didn't get the name that I wanted. You're going to run into that same issue on all the social networks. So it is a good idea to claim your name on as many networks as you can. Even if you're not going to be using Periscope anytime soon, if you've claimed your name on Periscope, you won't be kicking yourself when finally next year you get into Periscope but the name's taken. So what I'm saying here with LinkedIn, just to show you this, I have claimed personally um, on LinkedIn my name. 
linkedin.com slash in slash Victor Campos. I beat every other Victor Campos in the world to it, because this is global. Um, there's LinkedIn's in, in, in Mexico, there's LinkedIn's in India, every country's got a LinkedIn, but there's only one LinkedIn. And so that means that everyone wants to get the name, and if you have a common name, your name might be taken. So I did manage to claim just plain old Victor Campos, not Victor M. Campos or Victor Manuel Campos or whatever. I got that name. I'm going to show you where to get that name because you don't have that name automatically. You want to get the nice simple name, and it's right here. Profile, edit profile, and it's going to show you your profile. And here's your current address. My current address is linkedin.com slash pub Da slash Victor dash Campos slash 105 slash 111 B blah 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 blah. That's my name. I don't want that name. I want it just to be Victor Campos, which I know is taken, but I want a simple LinkedIn name. And you would never see this. They kind of make it tricky. You can edit that. If you put your mouse on top of it, a gear appears. It's not visible until you try to put your mouse there. So right below your photo, check what your address is. And if it still says that long, weird address, let's click on that gear. It appears when you hover near the, near the address. And on the right side, your public profile URL. Enhance your personal brand by creating a custom URL for your LinkedIn public profile. Create your custom profile. And there you'll easily then you'll have the easily much more rememberable linkedin.com slash in slash the name that you want. So try to try to pick your name. Hopefully it hasn't been taken. If it has, you might have to put your middle name or other things, but try that. Try to add a try to claim your name if you haven't done so already. All right, so... Do you think it's a good thing to put the link in your resume? Putting your LinkedIn on your resume. Hmm. Um, I don't think it's a bad idea, but I don't think it's, it's necessary yet. I think the companies, if they want that, they will ask you for it or they will look you up. So... If you're, it, that's that's sort of in the same idea to either show a link or a QR code. That's a good point. I don't know exactly just yet. I'd have to ask my HR friends. But I think I think resumes are still pretty old school at the moment. They just want the basic text and stuff, and they'll look you up online. But I like the idea of the QR code or to add the LinkedIn link. But I don't know. I have to ask my HR friends. I sort of feel like no, these things are not. You know, resumes are still old school. I don't think they really want that kind of link. Just your phone number, your email, and that's it. Okay, so uh, you want to claim that name there as soon as you can so that no one else takes it. And then um, you want to make sure you click Save. Let's, uh, let's go back to that uh, profile menu at the top and click Edit Profile. 
it might be it might then ask you this is going to be random for everyone I think but once you go back to your profile it's going to start asking you stuff here and you do want to fill in as much of that as possible but I'm going to ignore it for the moment but it's going to ask me what's your industry what's your education all that just ignore it for the moment but it is helpful just ignore it on the right side it says profile strength and I'm at beginner most of you are probably at beginner and you want to fill up you want to get that full all the way up to I think it goes to professional and that's just going to be asking you to fill in a bunch of these questions little by little you will fill them out but just ignore them for the moment don't skip just ignore because I want to point out a few things and then we'll get to it um, right now if someone if I did have my my uh, LinkedIn address filled in people would visit this profile and it would be pretty empty looking it would um, you wouldn't have my photo or anything so I don't have a photo handy but I, I have a spot here to add a photo and you do want to add a, a nice looking photo um, you probably will not get the most professional photo going like this right you want to get a nice good photo good lighting um, not flash flash is never flattering especially when you have it this close up so a good photo that someone takes of you perhaps maybe you have an artistic photographic friend ask them to take you a nice photo a headshot you know look at how much it's showing right there on that preview photo it's basically this is known as a bust shot it's just showing the top of your head like this you know your head down a little bit to your shoulders a bust shot you want to do something like that not a full body photo because a full body photo these photos are going to be shrunk down to a variety of sizes especially if people are checking you out on their mobile device it's going to be really small so a full body shot on your LinkedIn number one doesn't look professional and number two is gonna look bad it's gonna be too small even on a monitor or a laptop or whatever so you do want just a shot up you know a bust shot up here professional looking good lighting smiling looking dressed or whatever dress for success have you heard of the term there dress for the job you want not the one you have you know I might work at McDonald's and that's fine but I might want to work as a manager of McDonald's so I want to dress with a tie and stuff get a good photo and then upload it to my LinkedIn I don't have a photo handy but I do eventually want to get a good photo for myself and upload it and look professional and for fun you have different sizes and such so there's my photo so you want to you want to add a photo at some point as I said, uh, LinkedIn is becoming a little bit more like a social network, and uh, part of that also is presentation. It's content and presentation. Here's something new that if you've used LinkedIn before, you might not have seen this. Now at the top, it says add a background photo. To make your LinkedIn profile stand out even more, now they give you the ability to upload a photo within this area. You see this gray area back here. Now you can add a picture back there. And again, I would add a picture that makes me look more professional, that makes me look more hireable. So if I was a web designer and I want to get hired for more web design jobs, I want to put a nice photo of myself there. And then maybe I'm going to take that space back there to add, you know, a picture of some of my work. So it's sort of like an eye-catching thing right away. This is going to be a little strict, however. It needs a photo that is 1,400 pixels wide by 425. If I try to add, I think, a smaller picture, it won't let me. It does say recommended at least 1,400. So I, I am adding a picture. It looks kind of blurry. But in the back is another spot to control your message a little bit more. Again, if you if you do a Google search for Victor Campos, you're going to get several results, but I guarantee you a lot of those results are going to be me. And the number one result that often appears for me is my LinkedIn profile. So I want to put my best foot forward. I want to have a professional-looking LinkedIn profile. And so a little bit of that graphical... Uh, you know, people are unfortunately going to judge a book by its cover, so try to have the best cover. 
So I'm going to add a picture. You probably don't have a picture handy, so you can always add it later. But you want to add, and this will be part of the homework, you want to add a profile picture there and a cover photo back there. Any questions so far? All right, so. You want to put a photo in the back, do you say? Yes, but one that is relevant and professional about what, what you are with good quality. So on this main top profile area, you also have your name and other, other things about you. If you hover your mouse in that area, you get a pencil, so you can edit those. If you misspelled something or if you want to change something, so actually if you want to be known by a different name, the name that you write right there is different than the name of this address here. So on the address, you can have your short name, but then on your name at the top there, you can have your middle name, last name, maiden name, etc. If you want to change here, this is your main title. Right now, my main title is that I'm a student at Southwestern College. But I can change that, like let's say later I get a job such as web designer, at victorsdesigns.org and it shows me examples experienced transportation executive designer and information architect entrepreneur and investor so if there's any parts in LinkedIn that gives you suggestions check those out because again this is for professionals so based on that Instead of just being student at Southwestern College, I'm going to change that to web design student at Southwestern College. I think you have a limit to how much you can write, so make sure it fits. So uh, when I was setting this up, it, it gave me a location, Chula Vista, California. So the reason for this is, uh, where are you trying to get a job at? So here it suggested to me Chula Vista, and that might be good, but maybe I will get more leads if I target the larger, the, the larger areas of the of, of the area. So instead of um, uh, instead of simply Chula Vista, if I click on that pencil, it's giving me more suggestions. So US zip code here is fine. And it's saying, well, you can choose Chula Vista, California, or Greater San Diego Area. If I choose Greater San, Die San Diego Area, that might work better, actually, because that encompasses Chula Vista, and then also more of the larger San Diego metro area, which is a, a larger, more famous area, where people, you know, recruiters might not know that a Chula Vista exists, but they're definitely going to know San Diego exists. It's, you know, the eighth or seventh largest city in the country. So I would choose the larger area there. If you are trying to target a specific small area, maybe you're trying to get jobs in Imperial Beach, then try to put in a zip code or an area of Imperial Beach. That way you're going to target that area for people looking for to hire someone in that area. And it might ask you for industry. So there's a bunch to choose from here. And again, this is related to dress for the job you want, not the one you have. I'm currently a web design student, and I want to get a job in that kind of field. So I'm going to look around here and see which of these applies. Let's see. Online media might be one. Maybe internet. I'm going to 
go with internet actually. And save. So I'm filling in my profile a little bit more detailed. We've got an add experience section and a question mark. People could be looking for someone with your experience. So add experience. That'll actually jump us down because there's a bunch of little boxes that we can fill in. But if I click on add experience, it jumps you down to experience. And this is very open-ended how you want to, to do this. And again, this is like the new, the new generation of resume. So Whereas traditionally a resume, oftentimes they want it to be one page, maybe two pages, but further than that, it's too much for, for people. But this is better than a resume because this here, you can actually add all your experience and the people that really care about something will read it. Unlike a paper resume that if you put, turn in a four-page paper resume, they, they might look at page one or might throw it away because you didn't even follow the standards. But here... Um, it's asking for your experience and it's again open-ended in that well any experience especially related to what your kind of job you're trying to get is valuable so uh, if you've taken an internship if you've done a non paid you know volunteer work if you've gotten various jobs if you've gotten minimum wage jobs service jobs anything if you've done free work for your uncle yes all of that counts especially the more it relates to the kind of job you're trying to get. So let's say I made a basic website for my uncle. He has a real company, let's say, as a as a tile and stone company. So um, we'll call it uh, Kwan's Tile and Stone. And if it's a if it's a famous company that is connect that is set up on on LinkedIn, it might pop up Juan Valdez Cafe in Bogota. So if it is a real company that does exist in the LinkedIn system, you can select it from there, and that's actually better because people would be able to find you. But if it's not on LinkedIn, don't worry. You can still add it, and it'll still be searchable and useful. And what did I do in that company? Well, I made them a website. What, in your opinion, what possible job titles can you make out of that? You made a website for someone, so you give me an idea. What kind of job title would you give yourself about that? Web designer. Web designer, that's an obvious one. Good. If I start typing web designer, it might then pop up. Okay, web designer, senior web designer, graphic web designer web graphic designer, freelance web designer. So take one of these suggestions that shows up there. And yes, you were the only person that made your uncle's website. There's no problem in selecting senior web designer because you were the one that worked on it. You were the, the, the senior on it. So that'll work, senior web designer. And this is what I'm saying about embellishment. This is not a lie. I did work on his website. And that title maybe sounds way too high class, but that's it fits. I was the web designer of my uncle's website, and I was the only one working, so I'm the senior web designer. Yes? Is it related to age? No, it's not related to age. Uh, technically, it's related to the, uh, perhaps, to the amount of experience within that company. If you had worked in that company for five years and there's different people, you've worked on it five years and someone else had worked on it six years, that might relate that way. But in this particular case, if it applies, I will take it. If I'm the only one that did this website and it took me one month, I could take it, even though there's other definitions for it. But it applies. And I did this in Imperial Beach. How long did it take? And here again, a little bit of exaggeration is good, obviously not a lie, but what would make sense as an exaggeration. Let's say I've been talking to my uncle for six months that he wants a website, but it didn't. we didn't start until three months ago. I could take that whole six months as the time that I worked on it, because in a sense, I have been 
thinking about working on that project, talking to him about making the project, eventually confirming it, and then eventually when I started the work, so I'm just saying, take the maximum amount of time that is reasonable that you worked on the project. So I'm going to say that was between January of this year. And again, related to this, you might have built him the website. You, he might have said, okay, yeah, I'll, we'll do more work later. It's not a problem to then say, currently work there. Unless it really, really officially ended, if you might get other jobs or other work out of this, I would say currently work there. If it did end, then you want to put an ending date. One of the things that LinkedIn does not do very good or very well is that if you have more than one job, like I do, it doesn't really show all of them at once. It wants me to pick one of my jobs as my main title. What I'm saying up here, web design student at Southwestern College, and it's suggesting to me, actually, do you want to take your headline as senior web designer at Juan's Tile and Stone? Maybe yes or no, I don't know. For myself, that's what I see, and it's kind of annoying that I have instructor at Southwestern College, instructor for San Diego City College, and freelance web designer at PMD Interactive, and it's always asking me, do you want to make this one the main title? Do you want to make that one the main title? Sometimes I switch it, but LinkedIn doesn't show multiple titles. It doesn't get that people have more than one job that is open at once. It wants you to choose one. But no, I'm not going to add that as my main title, my main headline. And then it wants a description about that particular experience working at that company. I don't know what to write. There's examples. Let's see. I did brand development, website traffic growth, website UI, and advertising revenue, develop brand strategy and statistics systems. Now, obviously, that sounds very impressive. But that could all apply to that website that you made for your uncle. Brand development means you made them a logo in Photoshop. Website traffic growth means, well, you made a good website to try to get traffic to it. If you did any, any, uh, any setup or any SEO and such, that relates. Website UI and advertising revenue, maybe not that one exactly, but website UI is user interface, the design of the site. I worked with developing the design of the site. That applies. Advertising revenue, maybe not. That's that you worked on the site to increase the revenue regarding the ads on the site. Probably not. Develop brand strategy and statistics systems. Yeah, I would claim that. And that simply means that you develop processes or techniques or you, or you did it yourself or you trained someone or you worked with creating a brand strategy, making that logo, using that logo on the website and such. And maybe you set up Google Analytics or or uh, maybe you did that spreadsheet that we're working on. Remember the analytics spreadsheet? That's a form of statistics systems. So if you need any individual help, I'm, I'll give it during the lab. But here's a bunch of examples that you could use that may apply to your own endeavors. And so you do want to write in these sorts of terms what your experience was here in the description. Obviously, you don't want to you don't want to exaggerate way too much because, like right here, I wrote server management, which I simply meant I I uploaded the website to GoDaddy. Uh, that's not quite server management. That's much more complex. So I might not want to be that uh, embellished. Website branding and UI design sounds good, and it applies. So I would save that. And there will be various sections of education. You want to fill that in as much as possible. Have you graduated yet? Will you graduate? What's your degree? If you don't know it yet, maybe you can put in a general one. This is new also. In, any of these, in many of these sections, you'll be able to add a document or photos and links, you know, proof of that. 
So if you've got their web designer, Southwestern College, you know, web design certificate in Southwestern College, you can add a link to a website that you worked on. Maybe you could put together a video to show your work. We'll have later on a chapter on YouTube. We'll be able to make videos together. So you do want to fill in as much of that as you can, whatever makes sense, and it's going to start asking you at the top here. I would recommend that you add to these, uh, to these whenever it asks you, you want to fill it in, and then I would, if you can't quite do one or don't know what to write just yet, I would skip it, but I would take advantage of writing those as much as possible. So any questions on this screen? All right, so um, we'll look at one more thing here. We'll do a couple more. Um, if, you, if you go here within this particular screen, there's going to be a contact info section. And so what you want to do is click on where it says contact info. You see that little icon in the corner. It looks like the classic Rolodex, so you want to click on that. Question? Could you have a seat? I'm in the middle of the lecture. So you want to um, click on that contact info button. And here's where you want to fill in. Again, you're building an online presence. You want to put your best foot forward, and so here are ways for people to contact you. This will not be public unless you choose it to be public. But if someone does connect with you and you want to be available to talk about a potential job or a contact or something, it'd be best to fill that in as much as possible. This is going to be only showed to your connections or to who you choose. So that was there in that contact info in the corner. Later on, when we create a Twitter account, we can add it there. So a lot of these profiles are going to be linked together. I'm going to have uh, Twitter, but I'm still going to tweet about that Instagram photo. Or I'm going to have LinkedIn, but I'm still going to connect my Twitter account. So all of these are going to connect together to help each other out. And if you have any websites, we'll have a short uh, section on WordPress later on. WordPress is one of the best ways to make a website, uh, but that's toward the end of the semester. We'll be focusing mostly on the social media, then we'll do a little WordPress. Well, look at that. By adding more and more of these items that I filled in, it's starting to fill up my profile. I've gone from the beginning to intermediate, I'm in advanced, and I want to keep filling it up so that my profile is more complete, more professional, and again, if people search for your particular name, if you search for my name on Google, one of the first results will be my LinkedIn. And I'm trying to put the, my best content there, which will help me. And then one last thing, and then we'll get into the lab time and the homework, is we've been uh, basically polishing our profile as best as possible. But as I said, one aspect of LinkedIn is that it's also a social network. One reason why people might want to connect with you on LinkedIn is because, okay, you have something to offer people, your profile, but also if you click on the home button at the top left, you're going to see this home screen where you can put updates. And I wouldn't use updates as simply like, uh, today I went to the beach, or I'm going to go to the movies. I wouldn't do updates in that for that purpose. 
I would do updates to share content that would be important to my followers. So maybe I find a very cool blog about the top five LinkedIn techniques. So I can share an update with a link. I can copy and paste the link here, and I'm sharing content. It could be links, it could be text, it could be photos, but always think about it in terms of a professional social network. If a potential employer found my profile, would the items there be embarrassing? We don't want it to be embarrassing. Question in the back, ladies there? No? Okay. So, um, the main idea with LinkedIn is that we're using it for professional. This is going to be our assignment for this week. It's going to be due Monday. If we started this together, you'll be very far along in completing the assignment. But I'll take final questions here, and then we'll go look at the assignment in Blackboard. So any general questions in LinkedIn? It's really all about setting up your profile, making it filled in as much as possible, and for the purposes of the homework, to publish at least one post. And that's found here under the home. What's that? Well, either a picture or a link or text, but, but professional, related to something about your professional profile. Also, we can share updates. Yeah, that's the new feature of LinkedIn. It wasn't like that before. And you can try this. Click on the very top left where it says Home. And does it show it there? It's supposed to show you share updates. It's kind of, you don't quite see it, but it's right there, share update. So yeah, it's like that. Once you start making connections on, on LinkedIn, then you can uh, have that so social aspect. So at the very top, how do you find people? At the very top, you've got search. You can have it search for everything, for people, for jobs, companies, groups, etc. Just for curious, I'm going to select jobs and let's say web designer. Jobs for web designer. Let's see what happens. 2,800 results, Orange County, Foothill Ranch, Menlo Park, what's the most recent one? Graphic Designer, University of St. Francis, but that's in Chicago, LA Graphic Designer, so there you go. This is one of the reasons also to set up the LinkedIn. You create this professional profile and you've got the ability to search for jobs and then make connections and maybe get hired. Besides getting a job, what else, what other application can you get or what other benefits can you get from LinkedIn? The other big benefit is that you are creating the official online version of yourself. Again, as I said, that if you if people search you online and the main thing that appears are embarrassing photos on link, uh, embarrassing photos on Facebook and embarrassing photos on Twitter and such, that might not be so good. But if you're taking control of your message with LinkedIn, you're creating a better reputation for yourself online. So that's one possible use of LinkedIn. And the other is to make connections with people, maybe not trying to get a job, but maybe like I know that I've used it for people have come to me to ask me, can you do this kind of website? And no, I, my company and me, we don't have experience to do every kind of website. But I could post on LinkedIn here, does anyone have experience with XYZ? And the more connections I have, hopefully I find someone that can, and I pass on a job to someone else. So it's about making professional connections to help me mostly, but I could also help my network. I could build a good reputation online, and that's the big idea with LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So if we take a look at the homework now, in uh, Blackboard, we can go over to Blackboard. If we go to Blackboard, we will see the homework, and it's very, uh, very much related to exactly what we did in class, with just a little bit more. If you go to assignments, you will see that 
uh, assignment number five is there. Oh, I forgot to say, I haven't had a chance to grade everyone's Excel assignment yet. Um, it was a long weekend. So uh, what you want to do is just wait, and I will get to assignment number three to grade that very soon, and then I'll also start grading the Instagram assignment soon. But assignment number five is available, and if you look at that, after I'm done talking, you can print it, but basically it's going to be create a LinkedIn profile like we did together. Make sure you fill in all of these sections here, and of course send me an email with your custom URL so that I can find you on LinkedIn. I do have to say, my policy is I don't make connections with students during a class because I could be a conflict. Hey, we're friends on LinkedIn, but why did you give me a B in the class? Okay, after the class, after the class, what's that? Very good idea. Yes, after the class, I might accept connections and such, but not during a class. So uh, that's why you want to send me an email with your LinkedIn address. Don't request me as a friend on LinkedIn, as a connection on LinkedIn. You're going to send me an email after the class is over in January. Perhaps we can connect. But again, I'm kind of selfish, and you should be selfish too on LinkedIn. Connect with people on LinkedIn, not just because you know them on Facebook. Connect with people on LinkedIn because they are valuable to you. What will they provide to you? Will they connect you with more people that might help you? Will they share stuff that is useful to you? So that's how you make a decision to connect with people on LinkedIn or not. Question? Um, yeah, so are you supposed to, like, the people that have to graduate, it, like, lets you do their stuff and then it says connect, but then it doesn't let, let you, you have to know their email? Yes, that's how one of the ways that they try to prevent spammers from getting to you. The more you know about a person to confirm, the more it will let you connect. So if you're not able to provide some of those things, you're not going to be able to connect. So that's 10 points due by 11 p.m. on Monday. So five days to work on it. And if you were following along in class, you probably have most of it done. You want to make sure you followed all the items that I have there. Send me the email. We'll have a little bit of lab time now after the lecture to get any help that you need. And if not, then when we come back next time, we're going to be talking about Twitter. Next Monday and Wednesday, we're going to spend two lessons on Twitter. Honestly, it's one of my favorite social networks. It's very powerful. It's very useful. Uh, we'll talk about Twitter next time. This week, LinkedIn, and it's due on Monday. Any general questions? And one more time, any assignment that you haven't turned in, you can still turn it in to get some points, because nine points is better than zero points.